Welcome to DDL. I'm Justin. This is T. We're going to get into it. There we are. Wellspring Wednesdays. Welcome to everyone. Welcome. Justin's here with us with his faux hawk. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't mean to. You're, you're good. I didn't I, mean to. I didn't even do my hair. I took a shower and just. A little secret. Yeah. I didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Okay, so on this episode, we were going to kind of, it's going to be a little bit of a ramble, but I think okay. it all kind of touches base with yeah. each other, which is why are young men not dating in this day and age? Mm -hmm. um, what's the roles of fatherhood? Mm -hmm. um, and then we were actually going to kind of break down and have an interesting conversation with what's going on with what we were just talking about before we went on air, which yeah. is... Uh, fresh and fit and some of the scandals on there. And I kind of want to talk about the one which you were telling me that I didn't even know about. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, Chinese or whatever. Yes. 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 So um, let's start with uh, why are young men not dating? Why is the incel movement so high? Or I shouldn't say movement. Cause it's not a movement. Why, mm -hmm. why, why was the incel term really brought up in, in over the last few years? Well, you know, in, I, I think, and going back to fresh and fit, I, I think there is some value in saying, hey, man, get your stuff together, get right, get out of your parents' basement, start w working out, exercising, try to improve yourself. I think those principles are good. Um, but on, honestly, I, I think it it has become almost impossible for men to date and find high quality candidates. When you look at dating apps, when you look at Mm -hmm. You know, all that stuff. It is a minefield and a nightmare out there for anybody that's trying to date right now. I, I've tried several online apps. I've tried several different uh, websites. And it just, it's realistically, if you're trying to find somebody, online is not the way to do it. And unfortunately, if you're just a regular guy, there are women who are getting hit on every single day. There's guys who are much smarter, much richer much taller, uh, much more sh athletic than you are, sliding into their DMs. There's Again, I, I don't know if I told this story, but I got my hair cut a couple months back, and there was a, a girl that was sitting there talking. She's decently cute blonde girl, and she said an NFL player slid into her DMs. From, and she lives in Twin Falls, Idaho, slid into her DMs on Instagram. And it's like, mm -hmm. at that point, like – she stayed, she, you know, stayed faithful. But again, it's like when that's your level of competition as a 20 plus year old male, man, th that's, that's a difficult uh, minefield to try to navigate. You're kind of hitting on something that like, I mean, we, we talked fresh and fit, mm -hmm. but I mean, the one, one thing that, um, they, you know, Instagram is the bit largest dating platform out there right, right now. Right. Um, and in a lot of ways, um, I don't think women don't necessarily view it the same way like as a man would view it, mm -hmm. which is like we use Instagram to just whatever. Yeah. Um, but when they use Instagram, they're they're thinking, oh, we're just doing, you know, oh, I looked pretty or I, mm -hmm. I just, you know, whatever. Um, but what they don't realize is that they open up doorways to a world. Yes. To get. And so if you're in a committed relationship and you're on Instagram and you are posting bikini pics or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. While I don't think there's anything wrong with bikini pics, mm -hmm. what what you're doing is you're advertising yourself. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially if you don't have your man mm -hmm. in your Instagram. Yes, yes. That, that, then you're basically telling the world, I am single. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get at me. Yeah, and even if you shut your DMs off, there's there's ways that men can still contact you in the comments. And I, I've, I've expressed that frustration before, too, where I've been on social media sites or, you know, um, you know, checking stuff out, uh, either Facebook or whatever, and you see a girl and it's a picture of her and maybe her kids, and then it's her and it's her and it's her and it's her and it's her, and it's, her, and it's, her, and it's like, okay, this girl's kind of cute. And I'm sitting there looking at photos for friend suggestions, and I'm like, okay, well, question pops in my mind. Well, she must be single because, you know, I'm back here 10 photos and I don't see a guy in the picture. Yep. And then you scroll down and it's like happily married. And then like one of their 50 photos online is them with their husband. And it was from 2016. And if, it's just if you're lucky. Right. And I'm just sitting there going, hey, how, how disrespectful if, to the husband. is Absolutely. Because because if I'm married, guess what? My profile pic or my background photo is going to be me with my wife and my kids because mm -hmm. 
I'm not trying to get that sort of attention. And that's coming from a decent, decent to average looking guy that isn't getting hit up in that way. I still don't want to have that temptation thrown in my face. So I, yeah, the, the it, yeah. let alone if you're a very attractive girl, come on. Cause the way guys operate, attractive. you don't even have to be attractive. Yes. You the way guys average, operate, you can be an average woman from middle of nowhere mm-hmm. and you will get slid up on. Yep. Guys are desperate. Guys, guys will, guys will take a shot at whatever they can get. So if you're on Instagram and you have a boyfriend or a fiance or a husband mm-hmm. and he is not in your Instagram photos, he is, uh, and you're posting pictures. This is one thing I don't, I don't think women fully understand. Mm-hmm. They're always talking about how men sexualize them. Right. I don't agree with that. Men don't sexualize women that don't sexualize themselves first. Mm, I disagree with that. You think? Because of how men are and how men think, we can sexualize anything. Well, I agree with you. We we could sexualize a billboard because men's minds are that dirty. Okay, I'm not disagreeing (laughs) with you on that. What I'm what I'm I'm trying to say is, let's stay on Instagram. If if your Instagram photos are of you um, in a bikini versus Mm -hmm. you being out with your boyfriend, right? that's the that's the sexualization I'm talking about. But but even if you do have pictures with you out with your boyfriend or husband in every photo, there's still going to be guys in the comments and the DMs still. That's true. Still. That's but true. you sh- I, I agree with the principle of yeah, let's do yourself some favors and try to make it minimize yes. minimize the the door opening. Yes. Right? If you truly love the person you're with, if you truly love the man you're with, mm-hmm. you're going to minimize it because yeah. men are dogs. Yes. And and even even coming from a Christian perspective, like there there are pastors and scandals and sexual scandals that that are still coming out even this year, and it's like even Christian men are failing this test. And so if the yeah. Christian men are out there hitting up girls on social media platforms and and all that stuff, even pastors, you know, and it's like okay, if that's how the men who are supposed to be following Christ are acting, the men in the world who don't have that sort of moral code or or compass, are you kidding me? Of mm. course they're going to go for it. So yeah. 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 Instagram, I think, is one of the downfalls of relationships in this yeah. day and age. I think that's one reason why I, we, we hit on it. This is why men are, younger men are not dating in this mm-hmm. day and age, right? The, the, the level of effort that they have to put forth in order to attract a woman mm-hmm. just to get slid up on from someone else. Oh, give me two seconds. It looks like our battery died. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and that's where, Again, I go back to partially part of this is sort of the the fresh and fit uh, model because they also encourage men, hey, r- rack up your body count before you get into a committed relationship. Uh, you know, do, do those sort of things before you end up getting married to somebody. But that kind of, again, goes back to, well, if you're purporting that sort of behavior for men to do, you know, it's not going to be good for all of society. And when you encourage men, hey, rack up your body count, don't worry about marriage, it's no wonder that even the red pillars who are supposed to be helping men out, even they are sitting there encouraging basically, hey, play the field, do what you want to do. And it's like, yeah, no wonder there there are men out there who don't have importance uh, placed on marriage, placed on relationship, placed on family. It's because you're actively encouraging, hey, get out there and, and be a high value man and sleep around and do what you want to do. So I know that, you know, th- sometimes uh, with with Fresh and Fit, you know, we've had some discussions and I, I think early on, I think they were more focused at helping men. But lately, I, I think their their focus has kind of changed. And I, I think that they've kind of gotten away from, hey, be be a man who is out of your mom's basement. Be a man who's successful. Be a man who has a j- stable job and an income. And make the best of yourself as a man. I think that's great advice to give. But when it comes to, you know, oh, there we go. When yeah. it comes to, hey, you know, rack up a body count, it's like, yeah, that kind of goes against what you're talking about because you're, you're create, you, by sleeping around with other women, are creating low value women. And we want high value members of all society, you know, hey, save yourself for marriage, save yourself for that special person. I think that type of talk helps to benefit everybody because when everybody's racking up a body count, then we sling around sex like we do and we, and we do these things that, 
at the end of the day, it's it's not good for everybody to be so hypersexualized. And we live in the most hypersexualized era of human history, other than maybe the Roman times. Maybe, maybe. Um, well, I think you're also kind of touching on the roles, of the importance uh, of fatherhood in this, yeah. in this role. Yes. Right? Because one of the things that has been on the rise is single motherhood either either yes. either div- through divorce mm-hmm. or through death or whatever right but um there's two really big things that come to my mind when you don't when you have an absent father in the house mm-hmm. for a man or for a boy he fails to um develop the control yes for his emotion self control in a in an emotional man is a dangerous man yeah uh, the, a, 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 a man whose emotions are unchecked yes, is a dangerous yes, man. Yes, yeah. yes, That's what I was trying yeah, to say. Thank yeah. you for clarifying. Yeah, that. I, I knew what you were getting at. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not saying men should have emotions. Men all have emotions. Yeah. It's about controlling those emotions. Right. That's important for a man because if, if you don't do that, men can be a very violent. Yes. Um, which is, I think, one, one issue why we see all these instances at schools and in, in, mm-hmm. in the rise of crime rates and right. all that stuff. Right. Um, and it was interesting. Uh, Void and I actually did this. We actually talked about um, the incarceration ra- incarceration rates mm-hmm. and whether or not there is a correlation with single motherhood. Mm-hmm. And the data that we looked at show that there is a high correlation between being a single mother and, and, their, and their son going to prison. Isn't it close to 95% somewhere some, in there? Yeah, some, yeah, something stupid. Yeah, it's it's not quite one for one, but I mean, it's, you know, causation isn't cor- cor- correlation. Correlation isn't, isn't causation. causation. But, but the, man. When the correlation is that high. Yes. Now, there are other factors that play a role in that. Sure. But those factors also stem from the fact that the single motherhood uh, is, the, is prevalent, right? So poverty level mm-hmm. is higher with single mothers. Right. Um, and obviously yeah right so yes poverty obviously influences the incarceration rate sure um sure but again that goes back to the simple fact that most poverty come from single mothers right um so it's 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 really weird the second thing that i would like to say that is important is on a female's role okay um the uh a single mother family uh the does not the the absent father does not teach that daughter modesty does not teach her right re- retention of her value right so which is why i think there's a like a lot of women this day and age want to do only fans mm-hmm. want to do cam modeling want to do right. these things because there is no strong male influence saying like hey if you do that there's long-term ramifications for mm-hmm. you you're going to struggle holding a relationship you're going to struggle right. with finding someone that's actually going to value you right right what my take on it is only fans models while they're human i'm going to respect them right let's get that sure. out of the way absolutely don't, don't don't sit here and say that i'm devaluing a woman that's not any way what i'm trying to say here what i'm trying to say is the, an only fans model is valuing short-term gain they believe that they're mm-hmm. going to gain a lot of monetary uh success which they're putting more of a, on a value on money mm-hmm. and on materialistic things than they are on their long-term happiness yeah. and we know and we know through studies that women drive their happiness through family union mm-hmm. um so the simple way to say it the old adage is true a father's role is to keep their sons out of jail mm-hmm. and their daughters off of stripper poles yeah well, and and as we talked about now, now it's more the OnlyFans, yeah, hundred percent online content, and that's where I, I look at it. And even in my life, you know, not having a father present and around, and you know, I I had a step stepdad who was around starting at age ten, but he was kind of checked out. He was going through a lot of personal stuff at the time, death death of a of a of a daughter, and so I I don't even blame him for where he was. But my formative years were either temporary boyfriends that there wasn't a lot of you know discipline or anything placed upon me it was a lot of my mom telling me you can do whatever you want to do and a lot of that positive affirmation without the discipline of the father Mm -hmm. and because and also because the the love of my father was withheld from me you know I tried meeting him met him maybe three four times in my entire life I, I I realized well he doesn't care if I'm alive or dead Mm-hmm. He he hasn't checked in. He doesn't care what's going on with me, my life, 
anything. And when you feel as though your father does not value you, you're going to look for validation from other sources yep. because hundreds of people could say, man, I love you. You know, you're, you're a great guy, but it wouldn't mean anything because he didn't value me. Yep. And so when I look at that, I go, you know what? And what did I do? Well, I was a good Christian for a good chunk of my early teen to early twenties life. And then when I finally did engage in sexual intercourse, I went overboard with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had a relationship with a girl uh, she cheated on me, broke my heart. And from there it was like, it was the, well, you know, women are this way. Plus the lack of lack of love there and the lack of love with my father sent me on a tangent of, well, if, if I just sleep with the right person and they can, and, and it's a, you know, it's a connection there. Maybe we'll, we'll get together and maybe it'll be perfect. And the only way we'll know is if we're sexually compatible first. And that was my mindset was sleep with as many Mm -hmm. girls as possible to kind of find, and you know, I wasn't trying to run through women, but it was that mindset of no, that didn't work. That was disappointing. That yeah. that wasn't that wasn't what I thought it would be. And and so through through that, I I never I was chasing, and and I didn't realize this until recently. The whole time I was chasing the approval of my father through sexual relationships with women. What I do find interesting that you kind of hit on, or that you kind of brought up, that mm-hmm. I think is interesting, worth compounding upon, is is what you just said, um, you realized that you were not valuing val- putting value in these women. Yes. You, oh, yes. That's that, great. Yeah. I I was treating them. I was disregarding them as though they didn't matter. So, and the reason I kind of want to touch on this is because yeah. I think a lot of women in this day and age, they don't realize that they think that, oh, because I'm getting all these guys sliding up in my DMs. Right. Like, like I'm high value. Right. But that's not true. A high value, a woman that's high value is some a woman that is going to, nope, that battery died again, um, is going to uh, maintain a stable relationship with mm-hmm. a single man. Yeah. Just because you have, just because you're beautiful and just because a lot of men are hitting on you. Yes. Does not mean you're high value. Right. It, it, how to say it? I knew, I know some women that they are beautiful. Yeah, the beautiful women and they they're just like, yeah, if if you know, I don't get what I want, then I just kick them to the curb until the next one. Mm -hmm. And and this kind of ties back into what I was saying, like having an absent father, either through divorce or whatever, um, they are putting more value on themselves for their beauty and allowing themselves to be used. Right. And be devalued Mm -hmm. and not respecting themselves. Right. Like they. um how to say it? How to say this? Women that truly respect themselves mm-hmm. will not allow themselves to be disrespected by multiple men getting at them. Right. Right. Um, yeah. The, they, a lot of women this day and age think that by being with a man, mm-hmm. one man that wants them to um maintain uh their sense of respect self respect and and value themselves mm-hmm. is controlling and that is not controlling that is love that is how a man shows love right. like i'm valuing you right. enough to make sure that no other man yeah is looking at you like you're not valuable yeah that and that's really good and and i was helping to perpetuate that whole system by my actions mm-hmm. the the and, and, and that's, it is cyclical. It's, it's when you have men that don't value family, that don't value their children, that don't value their sons and their daughters, then they grow up not realizing that they're valued. And so then they act and behave like they're not valuable, which mm-hmm. again, only fans, incarceration rates, treating people like garbage. Because mm-hmm. when you don't feel value, you don't really think of other people as all that valuable either. You may say it, but y- yep. your, your actions don't necessarily necessarily reflect it. And the interesting thing is, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, I want to be a good father for, for my son because my dad wasn't there for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I hear it said a lot, but what perpetuates itself is fatherlessness grew 
fatherlessness was a phenomenon in the 70s and 80s and it grew in the next generations it didn't shrink back it didn't slow down no. it's actually become an even bigger problem yeah. and again i go back to my christian faith thankfully i got a revelation of love from god mm-hmm. and when i got that again i i told you everybody else's love was down here uh, let's see if we can get it in the camera. Everybody else's love was down here. My dad's lack of love for me was up here, so it didn't matter what anybody else said. Yep. When God revealed his love to me, that that value of the, the lack of love from my father actually shrunk down to here, and then the love of God for me helped me to value myself, helped me to go, you know what? I actually do have meaning and purpose. And, you know, I'm not saying everybody finds that through Christianity, but when you don't have a father in the home, that values you and loves you. How do you overcome that? I mean, outside of the love of God, I don't know, you know, and and that's why a lot of this self-help stuff kind of comes out because there are ways to improve yourself. But even, even if I'm not, you know, making a lot of money, even if I'm not buff and going to the gym, I still have value, but I didn't see it because of what happened between me and my father. So it's interesting, right? Because you're, 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 There's a difference between a mother's love and a father's love. Yes. Um, And one of the very few unconditional loves that I think a human shows is a mother to their children. Absolutely. Um, However, a love from a father is typically unconditional as well, Mm -hmm. as long as they're present. Right. Uh, And that's the caveat, as long Mm -hmm. as they're present. And unfortunately, we have grown up in a society that no longer places value on a father. Right. And that lack of value in a father is perpetuating the system. Right. And that goes back into when you have men who don't value themselves, they're going to do the OnlyFans route. And when when your behavior is, you know, pornography, sexualization of women, treating women like objects, you then don't become a father because you're not living a lifestyle conducive to fatherhood. I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have you don't feel free not to answer. Have you ever purchased content, OnlyFans content, or watched pornography? Uh, not OnlyFans content, but yeah, pornography was a huge vice for me. And even even when I came back to faith, that was a huge struggle for me. Um, I, I think the pull and addiction of pornography is incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. And not everybody's pulled by it, but you know, me having an extremely addictive personality, marijuana use, alcohol use... Uh, pornography was was involved in that. And that was honestly probably the hardest of any of the vices I've ever had. Pornography has been the absolute most difficult thing for me to break. Okay, so I'm going to be completely open and honest with people, and I don't necessarily mind sharing this. Yeah. Um, so as you can tell, I'm fairly against OnlyFans. I'm fairly against yeah. cam modeling. I'm fairly against this when it comes to the person that I want to be with. Right? Sure. Um, when it, when it comes to the people I care about, I'm against it. Right. Um, <clears throat> that being said, um, yes, in the past I have purchased content, mm-hmm. right? Um, there was this one girl I was trying to get with, yeah. um, who ended up just basically wanting to sell content and in, right. you know, not thinking about it, thinking, sure. Oh, you know, this is just going to help grease the wheels. Yeah. Facilitate the meat. Right. Ended up never happening. Um, or whatever, but I mean that that's the that's the trap that men can get stuck into, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. I think that goes back to what modern day why that's not happening because yeah. they're trying to get attention online. Yeah, they're yeah. trying to get attention online, and then they're just using that in order to get money. Sure, right? Which is fine, great, get the bag. But but as yeah. men, as men who are trying to actually have a stable relationship, mm-hmm. um, it's actually not conducive for that relationship because right. you're, you're looking in the wrong place. Right. Because if she's willing to do that to you, she's willing to do that to everyone else. Right. So even if she does get with you, yeah, what's the chances that she's going to do that with someone else? Right. Exactly. You know? So it's, it, we live in a very complex world. Um, and unfortunately, you know, we've all done things in our past that we might not be proud of. Yeah. We, we all Absolutely. Things. So, um, you know, I have children. I have two boys and a girl. Um, my two boys, I try to interact with them as best as I can. I try to keep their emotions in check the best mm-hmm. that I can. I also try to give them the freedom and, and space that they need to, to express themselves. Yeah. Um, one of the most powerful moments I remember with my oldest, um, we actually almost came to blows and it, it ended up him 
collapsing into my shoulder and just holding him for like 15 minutes mm-hmm. while he got his frustration out and right. everything. And um, it's 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 very important to do that yeah. and, and to give them the, the safe space to do that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then my daughter, um, <laughs> my daughter is hilarious. I mean, you, you, she's you funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And, she, she she has the attitude of a of a twenty three year old black woman. She's got the sassiness of a twenty three year old black woman in in her. T- <laughs> yeah, she's she's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she has very good opinion. Or I shouldn't say very good opinions. She mm-hmm. has she has very strong opinions. Yes. Um, and a lot of that actually stems from the conversations I think that her and I have. Mm-hmm. While we don't agree on everything. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, she is very open and receptive um, and, and and wants to make sure that she is ha- uh, providing a, a happy, stable family life already mm-hmm. at the age of 11. Yeah. You know what I mean? The the nurturing side is yeah. really coming out already. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And she's been that way for years now. Yeah. She wants to make sure she's taking care of everyone else. And she also has, um, the nice thing about her is she has the respect for her friends mm-hmm. and for her enemies and she has respect for herself. Mm-hmm. So she's a, she's a very strong woman. And, yeah. and I, I, I am so proud of her. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, again, the family that I live with. Their, their oldest daughter is similar age range. And it's very, very much you can see um, very nurturing already. Very like, all right, let me help take care of the baby. Let me help out with my little brother. Let me, let me take, let me take the reins here, you mm-hmm. know? And so, um, yeah, yeah. And, and again, both of those situations are where the father is present. Mm-hmm. They have enough respect for themselves. That they see value in others. They they tend toward that natural nurturing, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, tendency. So. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't mean that a woman raised by a single mom doesn't have those tendencies. Right. But there is a higher propensity for them to um, utilize their beauty in order to manipulate men in order to get what they want. Right. Without having, which disrespects the man, mm-hmm. the men that they're doing it to, it's yeah. disrespectful to them, yeah. but it's also very disrespectful to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, so. Yeah. I would a hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. Um, and then th- I think this kind of takes into a caveat or a, a little, it's not, it, it's, it's in the vein, but it's a little different. The men that are around these women that like that would want to do these OnlyFans that yeah. encourage them to do these OnlyFans right. or even maybe participates with them. Right. These are the definition of a fuck boy. These men are not men. These men are fuck boys. They're probably smoking weed, living with their mom, and they're probably don't have a very good career. They don't have a lot of drive in life but they're probably attractive and the woman that's doing it with them is probably like oh they're attractive they're fun to be with they're fun to hang out with they get high with whatever Mm -hmm. drink with party with whatever Mm -hmm. they're probably having the fun right but these men are never going to provide the stability that they honestly are looking for well and on the flip side on the other side of the camera there that that again why are men not getting into relationships why has the birth rate decreased so rapidly? Why are all these? Because online content. Yep. That's because true. OnlyFans, because of the ease of access of pornography, which congratulations to the states who actually said, hey, we need to set up age verification. Instead of you just clicking a button that says yes, you 18 plus, hey, th- this might be a bit of an invasion of privacy, and I agree that it is, but there has to be some way to vet are you of age to be looking at this type of content? Because I was exposed to pornography at the age of five years old. And mm-hmm. this was in the 80s when it was unheard of. A friend of mine that I was growing up with, his his older brother got a tape, played it. And I'm just sitting there at five years old watching like, what is that? What yeah. does she have? Yeah. What's going on? And they were explaining everything to me. And it was just traumatizing. I, I still know what the two of them look like to this day. Yeah. And so I think that's another reason that I, that it was so hard for me to shake that addiction. But when when you as a man are able to get ease of access for pleasure, for self-pleasure, you know, well, wh- you know, I would like a relationship and a wife, but but you know, 
this is easy and I don't have to have the drama right. and the baggage and the and the fights and the and and I can get the the satisfaction of the one side of this but I don't have to deal with any of the heartache any of the the yep. the negative sides of it without realizing there are so many negatives that come to having most of your most of your interactions with women be online or through a screen. They don't realize how, how damaging it is. You're hitting on something, and I don't even know if you're necessarily trying to hit on it, but it, it life is about sacrifice. Yes. Right? So the most important things in yes. life comes from the self-sacrifice that you must do. Yeah. Anything worth obtaining or going for mm-hmm. requires sacrifice. Yeah. That can be sexual yes. in nature. That can be um, financially. Yeah. That can be... Um, what whatever it is, you have to sacrifice mm-hmm. in life in order to progress to the next thing. Yeah. And that's something that I think society has failed to realize as well, yeah. is we're in this instant gratification mm-hmm. society where we do something and we must have instant gratification. Yes. Whereas like, no, 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 take the time. Mm-hmm. Take the time, sacrifice, and then reap the rewards later on. Right. And again, that's that's a biblical principle. Set, as, set aside yourself for the sake of others. Set aside. Delay gratification. Don't don't try to cash in on it now. Wait. Waiting is good for you because it will produce something greater down the road if you let it have its work. But if you're trying to reap the harvest now, you you know, you what, like what, look, what, living in Idaho, like let's look at a cornfield. Yeah, you could harvest the stocks when they're here. But why not wait for them to get full grown and, and harvest two to three times as much? Yeah. You know? what, what I do think is hilarious is, is like, you're like, that's a biblical. If you notice, like, uh, there's a lot of belief system I have or, yeah. or a thought system that I have act- that actually follows in vain of it. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, which is interesting, right? Yeah. Um, but so I want to go back to the fuck boy thing, if you don't mind. I, I want to move back to this one because the, 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 uh, this is more of a PSA for men out there especially men that don't have a strong father figure in their life. I've said it before, and I, you, you've heard me say it before. A man's role in society is to protect the people that they care about. Mm-hmm. That can be your friends. That can be your girlfriend. That can be your wife. That can be your mother. That can be your mm-hmm. sister. You can be, and then along, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm talking from a, a female perspective who you should be protecting. If you are encouraging a woman. It, 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 let's say you have a friend and they are just like, hey, we can make money if we do content online. If you agree to that, you have not only failed to in your duty as a man to protect her, mm-hmm. you have actually devalued her. Yeah. If you were a true friend, you would have said no. Yeah. If 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 you want to be a friend to her, it's best to help guide her away from doing that because right. she is disrespecting herself. And if you were a true man, you would make sure that she does respect herself. And right. not only has she disrespected herself, you disrespected her as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I 100% agree with that. And again, it's without men to tell other men, Hey, <laughs> life without look, the love of a mother, like we talked about, it's amazing. My mom, amazing woman. She, she did encourage me. You can do whatever you want to do. And I needed that. Because I didn't feel that great about myself. So having her support me was great. But without an, a man being there to say, hey, life's not about just you. Mm-hmm. You need to set aside time. You need to sacrifice for women and children. They should be the most important thing to you. And how? not only am I telling you that, I'm living it out. And when you have a man that, like as boys, we learn from hearing but we learn by watching somebody do it and when you have a man that goes continually day by day works hard sets aside his own needs for the needs of his family for the needs of his wife for the needs of his children and lives it out and shows you what self-sacrificial love is as a boy you look at that and you go that's what my dad did and you you see that as as an example and you want to follow it you want to emulate it and so as much as it is the instruction, it's so much more seeing it played out. And yep. when your your example is gone and you don't have anything other than movies and TV, mm-hmm. what do they portray? Men being playboys, men being yep. a bravado, men getting with tons of, tons of women. And if you're powerful enough, dangerous enough, uh, rich enough, you know, whatever it is, 
What's you. what's the main protagonist in most TV shows and movies? The guy who's able to get any woman he wants. James Bond. Yep. You know, How I Met Your Mother was was a TV show that I watched that kind of transformed how I treated myself and treated women. And mm-hmm. it was it was the the portrayal of of women in in rap music and mm-hmm. it's it's all of that cultural stuff was my influence. As much as I was reading the Bible, when I walked away from my faith, my cultural influence became how I shaped and molded my worldview and how I treated people yep. and myself. So I got divorced. And mm-hmm. after my divorce, I worked on myself, got my confidence back up yeah. and whatnot. And I became a little bit of a man whore. Not going to lie. Okay. So I know fresh and fit said men can't be whores. Yeah. They're whore makers. Well, that's just wrong. I, I, yeah, I would. Like, yes. I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so men can be whores. Yes. Um, the, because basically, if you think about it, uh, by doing that, I was disrespectful to a bunch of people. I yeah. was disrespectful to myself mainly. Yeah. Because I was looking for outside influences to validate how I wanted to feel. Mm-hmm. Right? Similar situation which you would describe. Yeah. Um, and I did not hold myself accountable. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and, and I think that's one big thing that men need to do is hold themselves accountable. And men men do hold themselves accountable at a very high rate Mm -hmm. when we make mistakes or when I make mistakes, I like to own up to it. Yeah. Like, even though I did it and I thought I was doing the right thing at the time, looking back at it, it wasn't the right thing to do. Right. It was, it was disrespectful all around. Right. And it, it, it's, it's a really weird, um, to how to say this. It's really weird to look back at it and realize how big of a mistake I was making. Yeah. It's it's strange. It's yeah. a strange feeling because when you're in it, our society perpetuates that that was the right thing to do. Yeah. As, but, as but, long as nobody gets hurt is yeah. the term. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all about that instant gratification. Right. Right. I was, you know, it was all about me. Yeah. It wasn't about the relationship. But, but again, and it goes back to we are hurting ourselves when we behave that way. We are hurting others when we behave that way. I had a pastor... Uh, say this. He said, because uh, he talked about the the beatitudes and Jesus saying, you know, if you lust after a woman, you've committed sexual sin with her. You know, it's not just about whether you sleep with her; it's about if you've looked at her with lust. You've, and one of the things he said, if you hate your brother or sister, uh, you you're just as good as killing them. And the way he described it, he said, when you sleep with somebody and you discard them. Like they didn't matter. You don't remember their name. You don't have their number. When you do that, you're literally throwing them away as though it, you might as well be killing them because you have cut off any value that they have to you. You've cut, you, you've disregarded them and thrown them in the trash. And so by doing so, they're as good as dead to you. And when he said that, I was just like, oh, that cut to the heart because, yeah, I was treating women as though they had no value to me other than gratification. And, well, you know, that didn't connect the way. Move on to the next one. And like you said, when I was locked in that mindset, it was it was really hard to escape and get away from mm-hmm. because of all the, the influences. But once you step outside of it, once you do get away from it, you look at it and you go, man, how could I have been that foolish? How could I have been that stupid? And so... Ultimately, I, I think what we're both encouraging is, you know, if you're a young man, like we want to encourage you, don't do the same mistakes we did. Don't don't think right. that, well, it would be different for me. Well, you know, I'll do it right. I'll show you. And because that's what I thought. I heard men talk about their mistakes and I'm like, well, you just weren't skilled enough to do it. Mm-hmm. So I'll do it and I'll show you how it's done. No, they were right. I uh, y- y- maintaining not not your purity just for purity's sake, but maintaining your own self-respect. And I think men can learn a lot from respect yourself as a man. Don't just give yourself to every woman that's out there. No. I, I think it goes both ways well, when, kinda, when we kinda, both respect ourselves. It kind of it kind of ties back to the emotional control that men are supposed to have. Yeah. Men fail horribly and no one ever calls them out on it. It's mm-hmm. maintaining their emotional control on their sexual desires. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So a true man is going to be able to maintain that. Right. That's so, that's good. That's a really good call out. Yeah. So the so we did a PSA for the young men out there mm-hmm. acting a fool and and being fuck boys and encouraging their female friends or whatever to to do these OnlyFans. The next PSA that I would say is to women, young women out there that have 
male friends that would encourage you or would agree with you that the to either sleep with you or to make content with you or to whatever those are not your friends mm-hmm. you should not be friends with them right because all they're doing is they're utilizing you for sexual access yeah yeah so that that's the psa for the females out there yeah yeah and and I'll encourage both groups, value yourself. Well, I don't feel very valuable. Find something where you find value. For me, again, my faith was huge for me. Well, maybe you're not into that. That's okay. Find find a way to be valuable. Find, find something that you find value in. If it is working out and taking care of your body. Wow, cultivating and looking after my body. I, I've lost weight. I've built muscle. I feel better about myself. And in turn, I value myself more because when I look in the mirror, Hey, it's not a big, big guy with a fat distended belly. There's some muscle. Okay. Oh, wow. I've got muscles in places that I didn't know were possible, <laughs> you know? And, and when you start doing that, you, you really start to value yourself. And when you eat right, when you take care of your body, of course, you're going to value yourself more. Mm. It, it logically follows because you, you're investing time and energy and effort into this physical vessel that yep. we're in. And so when you do that, you're going to care more. You're, you're not, ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't have that snack, but also, Hey, it, it should bleed over into everything. So whether it's working out, whether it's finding a career, whether it's finding a hobby, whether it's finding a passion, find something that makes you feel valuable, feel some, feel, find a community where you feel included and valued. If, if you don't have that yet and online community is great. You know, we love the comments. We love, we love the discussions, but at the end of the day, try to find in-person groups that you can connect with. Yep. Yeah. That in-person connection is really important. Huge. So I, I do want to move on to the fresh and fit and then the little controversy that you were talking about with uh, yeah. fresh with the Chinese uh, lady. Yes. So can, can you kind of break it down overview of what, what, what transpired? Well, with fresh and fit, they, they kind of encourage men, you know, uh, Live, live how you want, kind of sleep around, play the field if you want. But then when you're looking for a woman to get into a relationship, make sure she's a high value woman. Make sure she's somebody who saved herself, who's not a uh, th- 304? 304. 304. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I messed that up earlier uh, okay. talking with him outside. But make, make sure that when you're ready to settle down, it's with a high value woman. And so it, it was funny because the uh, fresh. Yeah, fresh. Was it Walter? Walter. Walter. He was was talking about how, you know, his body counts in the thousands and all this stuff and how he can get any woman he wants. And then he was dating a girl who was a Chinese uh, Chinese woman who, by all intents and purposes, was a prostitute. She had sex for money. And the chat actually knew that, and they actually threw it out there and uh and told both Myron and Walter hey this watch out this woman is one of those ladies you're talking about and uh he proceeded into the relationship and they defended it and uh turns out at the end of the day even though they said she's not a, she's not that she doesn't go out and sleep with with other men for money turns out she actually did and she also claimed to be pregnant with his kid and wanted to extort him for money and then all of a sudden the tables turned and he's uh Walter's then saying no no she she's always been a, a a prostitute for money and all this stuff and so anyway it was just kind of a from the manosphere the red pill uh community it was kind of a, a scandal that that hit them so I, i'm gonna break out three things in this that i yeah that i think are important yeah first is, is i think that's most men's biggest fear is that mm-hmm. the woman that they're involved with sure is entertaining other men whether it sure. be for money or not for money mm-hmm. um that that uh, that is one of men's biggest fears, I believe. Yeah. Right, um, which is why I do like the Red Pill Nations because they're trying to teach men how to be on the lookout for these these indicators that show a woman is actually going to be more likely to do that. Right. Um, the second thing I think I point out is I kind of actually appreciate that this happened to him mm-hmm. for the simple fact that it does go to show that even a man that is sitting there doing this on a day to day, trying to give advice can fall victim to a manipulative woman. Yeah. So if you're in a relationship and you're finding out that your woman is talking to other men for money or even not for money, just talking to other men, entertaining men, Mm -hmm. don't feel bad because all men fall victim to it. Yeah. Women are very manipulative. They, they, they They can be, they can be. Yeah. Um, and I would encourage men to look into the red pill. You don't have Mm -hmm. to buy into everything that they're selling. 
but look into it because they are trying to teach some tricks and some tips on what indicators you should be looking for to determine whether or not the relationship is valid. Mm -hmm. And the third thing I'd like to point out on this one is the body count is plausible, probably not likely. No. And I, we, we talked about this off screen. <laughs> yes, uh, Walter is not necessarily the most charismatic and he doesn't necessarily have the best um, flow. So he might not talk to women very well. However, one thing that does stem from the red pill world mm -hmm. is that money does a lot of talking for men. It does, but I don't think he has that kind of money. If he had Jeff Bezos money, I'd agree with you. But his awkwardness is... <clears throat> how do I say this? Uh I don't care how much money you have. If you you aren't comfortable enough around women to talk to them, they're gonna they're going to lose interest real quick. They're yeah. gonna they're gonna go. I don't care how much money this dude has. He's corny. And look, you can say whatever you want about Walter. I'm sure he has done decently well with the ladies because he does have a good amount of money. However, he is he is not the type of person who has slept with that many people. Trust me. Trust me, I know. I've been around guys who have that gift, who can literally walk into a room, command that, command that presence, and have their pick of any woman that they want. He does. He does not strike me, and that's the kind of guy you would have to be to have a in the thousands quadruple digit body count. So anyway, unless you're paying for it, right? Right. Well, yeah, but then I wouldn't consider that. Yeah, technically, you've had sexual intercourse with somebody but honestly like who, who counts that your, your game did, your game didn't land that yes you, yeah yeah you exactly you that. didn't earn it yeah. yeah but i'll go back to you know i I, th I think and and here's where you're right it there are ways that you can protect yourself and make wise choices when it comes to who you date because who you date the reason you're dating them is because you're looking for somebody to marry so when you're dating your selection has to be, you have to take out the most variables that make it likely that somebody's going to be scandalous with you. You want to find somebody who's going to be faithful to you. Mm -hmm. And so, look, it doesn't matter what sector of society you go into. I, I have seen, I, I, there was a Christian man, him and his wife had been together for close to 17 years. They were high school sweethearts. They grew up together. They were in their 40s. They had four children together, and she left him for an 18-year-old. Just just left him. And then they stayed, and she was still going to the church that he was at. He was a pastor, everything. So there's no way you can be 100% foolproof on this stuff. No. The, the, you never know. Hearts can change. People mm -hmm. people can get tempted away. The person that you started out with could become a completely different person down the road. 100%. But but as men, we need to make the best informed decision that we can and go. You know what? It's less likely that when I go to church that I'm going to find a girl who's sleeping around. That's pretty universal across the board. Now now again, it kind of depends on what church you go to. Yeah. But I I will say. It, it doesn't matter just that they're going to church. How do they how do they live? How do they treat others? How do they behave? How do they react when they get attention from men? Are they looking for attention from men? Are they are they dressing modestly? Are they taking care of themselves? Are they talking about marriage and family first and foremost? Like th those are some of those indicators where you know nothing is a hundred percent foolproof, but try to set yourself up for success. Okay. So that so that you don't fall into that trap. So I'm going to go back with you. You said behavior. Behavior is actually a very big indicator that men really need to pay attention to. Yeah. If they're saying one thing, but they're behaving a different way. Yes. Th that is a red flag. Um, yes. Now, I. I as, a, the, as a man who has been cheated on, believe what they do, not what they say. Believe how they treat you. I am a firm believer that any relationship requires coaching. Mm -hmm. Now that's coaching from a man to a woman in that mm -hmm. relationship, but that's also vice versa. Yeah. A woman needs to coach men because yep. we are too dis If I'm in a relationship, that woman is her own person. Mm -hmm. I am my own person. We have different thoughts. We have different structures on how we're going to live our lives. Yep. However, if we truly care about each other, we're going to respect each other. Mm -hmm. Now, even though we might not agree on everything, we're going to take the other person's account mm -hmm. into, to, to regard. So we're coaching each other to mm -hmm. become the best versions 
of ourselves in that relationship for each other. Right. Yeah. Active communication is the key. That, that's, that's why any relationship falls apart is lack of communication or misinterpretation of communication. And that goes for physical relationships, uh, you know, social relationships, friendships, business partnerships. If there's a breakdown in communication, you're likely to have the whole thing fall apart if you don't try to restore it. And, and I would say this, as, as you were talking about, yes, listen to their words, but also listen, watch their body language, yeah. watch how they behave, watch, watch how they are. Are they being distant? Are, is their body language, uh, further away from you? Yeah. Are they, are they, are they are, leaning in? Yes. You yes. They're leaning into you. Yeah. There's but, so many well, little indicators there, to watch for. Thing. Yeah. There, there's one other thing. Like, let, let's say you're on video chats too. Sure. Right. So if you're on a video chat and they are. Uh, looking distant, like they're checking something on their phone. Yeah. Be on the lookout for that too. Yeah. Because they're not giving you the attention that yeah. you deserve. Yeah. If you're in the relationship with them and they're scrolling on Facebook or they're playing a game or whatever mm-hmm. while you're having a conversation with them, uh, that that's another good indication as well. Yeah. And I would say this, this advice goes to both men and women, but realistically women are already kind of good at this. Yes. So men, this is, this is more for you. Yeah. 100%. Well, she said she was fine. Did she say it like this? Because if she said it like this, she's not fine. Or if those arms are crossed, she's not okay. Well, like, I think the, <laughs> you know, the, the other thing that really needs to be brought up is is the communication styles between the sexes are, is completely different. Yes, men typically focus on the information that is being conveyed. Right, women focus on how that information is being transferred. Mm-hmm. So that there is a huge obstacle to overcome initially right yeah. away is because our the communication between the two parties mm-hmm. is not the same. Right. So you're basically taking analog and trying to put it digital. Yeah, it, uh, you heard it said it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yep. So that's I'm, that's one hundred percent of of communication with women. It's so much more. You can lose an argument because you had an angry tone, yes, ver- and how you made them feel. And it doesn't matter if all of your factual information is correct. If you made them feel a certain way or threatened or whatever, they, they don't care in their mind. They, they have put a barrier there. And yeah. so, yeah, be, be very aware of, Hey, how are my words coming across? Cause as guys, it's like, well, I, I stated all the information exactly how it is. Well, with women, they tone is huge with them. Yeah. Make sure you're careful in how, in how you're conveying your messages too. Like you, you can say the sky is blue, right? Or you can say the sky is fucking blue. Men are okay. The sky's blue. Women, well, why'd you have to say it like that? Yeah, there's, there's a difference. Well, and so and, and me being a contrarian, actually, right now the sky is black. Oh, shut up! <laughs> 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 I knew it was coming. Yeah, it was great. Um, but D- debate is my love language. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but th- that's more or less what it, what it is. Is like you have to start learning how to communicate with the opposite sex, and that goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Women women should be focusing on the fact that men don't communicate the same way they do. Yeah, and it's all about the respecting the relationship, respecting yeah. each other, trying to come up and trying to be respectful. Mm-hmm. You don't have to agree on everything right but you just need to be respectful to each other yeah absolutely that's the most important part absolutely and I, and I think that's kind of the thrust of everything we're talking about is respect, respect for one another respect for yourself and you know making sure that you know you're respecting boundaries you're respecting hey i i don't feel comfortable with this like everything like as people that's how we make a better society is is respecting each other the whole way through and that includes Question men having respect for women and children and themselves yes sir question for you you just brought up boundaries so boundaries is a great topic yeah um while it's great to have personal boundaries mm-hmm. um in a relationship uh there, there's sometimes where you have to let those boundaries down right N- now i'm not saying like like to the point where you're being violated or being right. hurt in any way shape or form. right but it, let's say that um you are adamant against going for sushi. I'm just going to take it, right? Yeah. So you're adamant against going out for sushi, but she likes sushi. Use, you have using bound- my own. I am. Yeah, against me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so you have a boundary up. No sushi. She has a. She wants sushi. Yeah. You have to sometimes let that boundary down. Right. Because that letting that boundary down is a sign of respect to her. Right. Right. So that that's what I'm getting at is is most people are not wanting to violate their person's trust or boundaries. Right. However, if you truly love the person, you are going to reduce your boundaries in order to show them like, hey, 
I, I'm I'm here. I'm reassuring you. Right. I am, I, I'm being the person you want me to be, even though I'm uncomfortable doing this. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and self-sacrifice for you. Right. And and that's where I'd say is is the boundary a moral foundation boundary for you or is it just a boundary that you've kind of set up arbitrarily and that's where you know again getting into the communication and the discussion well why don't you like sushi well can we go Mm -hmm. you know having those is this something that i'm just digging in my heels to be a stubborn jerk yeah Yeah. Yeah. or or is this something that's actually really important to me like again one of my boundaries for myself in dating it is you know uh, number one, she has to be a Christian. She has to love Jesus. There's a girl I recently spoke to and the first, uh, we were talking on the phone. The first question I asked her, are you a Christian? She said, yeah. I said, okay, good. Cause otherwise relationship talk would kind of be over at this point. The yep. second thing that I've set up as a boundary for myself is I plan to not have sex again until I'm married. I've set that boundary for myself out of respect for myself, out of respect for her, out of respect for the future of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so like those, those are boundaries for me, not flexible on. And if you're going to try to get me to bend on either one of those things, I'm sorry, but at the core of who I am, they're going to violate my conscience and I I can't let those go. Everything else I'm pretty flexible on. Yeah. You know, I'm fairly flexible on pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm all very go with the flow. However, one thing that I've uh, come into play with or, or as I've grown older is, um, saying no more. Sure. That that is one thing. Being comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. Being comfortable saying no. And I'm I'm trying to teach other people that I work with on how to say no. Mm -hmm. Like you can have the request and it is completely fine for you to say, I'm sorry, I cannot get that done for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that that is a boundary that I'm putting into place as well is just starting to say no. Yeah, yeah, and that's good in in business, in relationships and friendships. It's okay to have those things where mm-hmm. you you are okay with saying no and and oftentimes we kind of spread ourselves thin when we say yes to everybody all the yep. time. Yep. So yeah. Then you start losing yourself. Too. Yeah. You start yeah. coming unwound. Sure. So yeah, there's there's I think the message for today is be respectful. Mm-hmm. Um be respectful to yourself. Be respectful to others. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, I really dislike some of the the way our society is going, and it's more or less because there are people I care about that I see that have a propensity to do these things, mm-hmm. and and I don't want that for them. I want them to be happy, successful, and um, as much as as much support as I can offer, I mm-hmm. will offer. Yeah. But uh, ultimately at the end of the day, a, l- a lot of the stuff has to come from inside yourself, you know. You yeah. can't you, you can't rely on someone else to 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 make your life where you want it to be. Right. Who was it? Uh Eddie Griffin who said it that's why it's called self-esteem. Or no, it was Cat Williams. He said it's why it's called self-esteem. It's esteem of your own self. Nobody <laughs> else can do that for you. Yep. And and again, are we as a society trying to build uh respect honor value for one another Mm -hmm. if we are that's that's a way forward and unfortunately when i look at the landscape it just kind of really isn't happening but the more each one of us in our own personal lives can do that it can reflect and help others to see hey that guy seems to have his life together or that girl seems to have her life together what are they doing differently than me and and it might cause somebody to to take a look and go maybe i should reevaluate how i treat other people and myself so, um, you know how people always like to bring up like Jeff Bezos and stuff like that, how they get uber rich. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I know a fair amount of successful, wealthy individuals. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I've noticed that is commonplace and, and I've actually had people push back on me on this and I don't know how they come up. They're using, they're using like Cardi B or they're using like rappers, entertainers mm-hmm. as their justification. Like if, if that's who you're looking for to get your moral compass to determine whether or not you need to do it, you, you we're not going to see eye to eye on this one because, yeah. because you're, you're, you're utilizing, um, um, how to say it. You're utilizing, um, culture based success versus, uh, uh actual success, mm-hmm. long-term success. So like, most people I know are that are successful are non-materialistic. Mm. They they invest in people. They don't invest in things. Right. Um, so yeah, just interesting. I wanted to leave it at that. Yeah, that's good. So that's good. Perfect. Well, we're coming up on an hour again. That was a good conversation. I yeah. Thought. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, till next time, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. 
Till next time.